Hi, welcome to my video, The Principles of Simple Distillation. This is intended for chemistry students and beginners interested in the production of alcohols. We will cover the parts of a basic still, the mechanisms behind distillation, and the science explaining it all. Distillation is the name for a process used to separate liquids into their component chemicals. The distillation process is the vaporization of one or more components of a mixture, followed by their collection. In a generic distillation reaction, the reactant is a mixture of many chemicals, and they are often of low concentration. The product is a high concentrate of only one or a few of these chemicals. Distillation is used in many industries, including chemistry, manufacturing, and the production of homemade alcohol. The two mechanisms which are utilized by distillation are evaporation and condensation. These are both part of the hydrologic cycle, or water cycle. Substances undergo what is called a phase change when their energy state is altered enough. These phase changes that you likely already know are solids to liquids and liquids to gases. These changes are almost always reversible. To cause a phase change, we can add or remove energy from a substance. The easiest method of doing this is to heat it or cool it. This heating and cooling is vital to distillation. The components of a still are designed to create these changes. To distill, we must have a chamber for evaporation and a means of condensing steam. These phase changes allow us to filter our substance according to the types of molecules it is comprised of. We would call the substance the reactant in chemistry and the fermented wort or mash in brewing. The chamber where the evaporation occurs is usually heated by a heating mantle or hot plate. It can also be done using an open flame or burner. Historically, this is what was used, but distillation usually produces highly combustible fuels and alcohol, so that can be quite dangerous. The result of the heating is that the reactant begins to vaporize. The system for cooling this vapor is usually referred to as the condenser. The most common method for condensing is to use the Liebig or Graham apparatus. The hot vapor is forced due to its own pressure through the inner coils of the condenser. Colder fluid, usually water, is pumped through the outer sleeve. This results in a decrease in the temperature of the vapor, allowing it to take a liquid state again. After this has occurred, the product, or distillate, can be drawn off. The entire distillation process is dependent on the different molecular structures of chemicals. All substances that you are ever likely to put into a beaker are composed of molecules. They each have unique structures. Depending on what atoms join to which other atoms, tiny forces can be produced by the molecule. These are known as intermolecular forces, or IMF, because they interact with nearby particles. Intermolecular forces come in many different types and vary in their strength. I will not explain all of these in detail now because IMF deserve a video of their own. Basically, the stronger the intermolecular forces of a chemical, the harder it is to separate its molecules from one another. The ease of separation of various elements is referred to as their volatility. Highly volatile substances have weak intermolecular forces and so they vaporize easily, and vice versa. When we put a reactant or wort or mash into the still, it is a mixture of multiple constituents. If you are brewing, these are caused by the fermentation process. By heating the whole reactant to a specific temperature, we can evaporate all chemicals with a boiling point equal to and less than this point. Here is a table showing the boiling points of many chemicals. As you can see, the first alcohol, methanol, begins to boil at around 66 degrees Celsius. That's 151 degrees for anyone using freedom units. If you look down the chart, you will find ethanol. That's the main ingredient in most spirits, including vodka. As you can see, it boils at approximately 79 degrees Celsius. What this means is that by controlling the temperature of our still, we can be selective in which chemicals we evaporate, condense, and collect. It's time to do a practical example. Say I want to distill spirits. I would start with my fermented wort or mash. 
This will comprise a mixture of water, ethanol, carbon dioxide, sugars, and possibly a few other chemicals, including other alcohols. In its current state, the mash is like a kind of beer. It has low alcohol content, between 5 and 20%, and contains proteins and carbohydrates, as well as sugar. As I want to make spirits, I will separate ethanol from this mixture by distilling it. I will put the mash in the still and heat it. As the temperature rises, chemicals will be evaporated in order of boiling point. Once the temperature of the mixture reaches 79 degrees Celsius, or 173 degrees Fahrenheit, I will change the receptacle that I am draining to still it into. Depending on the amount of mash, the still will continue to produce vapor for a few minutes at this temperature. Once the still reaches approximately 80 degrees Celsius, I should change the distillate beaker back to the original one. The heat source would then be removed. Changing of the receptacles during a distillation run is very important. This is because the first beaker could contain any number of chemicals, as long as they have boiling points anywhere from room temperature to 79 degrees Celsius, and even above 82 degrees. The second beaker, however, contains up to 96% ethanol. If you consume this distillate, it would be very similar to that of vodka. However, the first beaker is a fast track to liver failure and alcohol poisoning. This is because it potentially contains acetone and octane. Ethyl alcohol is drinkable, but the other beaker would be similar to nail polish remover mixed with jet fuel. This hazard is the reason that household stills are often heavily regulated. Here in Australia, it is illegal to manufacture your own spirits due to the risk of poisoning. I say that the product could contain up to 96% ethanol. You cannot make a higher concentration because ethanol forms what is called an azeotrope with water. An azeotrope is a mixture which contains multiple chemicals, in this case, water and ethanol. But the mix exhibits the same concentration in both the vapour and liquid state. As a result, the components cannot be separated further via distillation. This is why pure ethanol cannot be made via distillation. Distillation only works on ideal solutions, which are solutions that are comprised of multiple constituents, each of a different volatility. Azeotropes are not ideal solutions, and because of this, their behaviour is not ideal. Because their behaviour is not ideal, it's hard to predict which mixtures will form them. So, we have now seen what distillation is, how it works, its dangers, and the exceptions to what one can distill. Thank you for watching.